Hello my friends, John LaRuffa here with another Straight Up Solo. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Earth from a solo perspective. I'll show you a couple turns, give you a feel how it plays, and then give you my thoughts and hopefully help you figure out if this is a game you want to put in your solo collection or one that you'd rather pass on. All right, let's get started. Okay, and as usual, folks, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And if you have, I really appreciate that support. Thank you so much. So what is going on in this game? Well, this game is a tableau builder with a ton of different, and I will say random, scoring goals that you go for in, in the whole entirety of this game. So the idea of the game is that you are trying to get the most points um, by filling up your tableau, if you fill up your tableau with a four by four grid of cards, game ends immediately and you'll get seven points. If the solo Gaia bot goes through its deck of action cards twice, it will then end the game and get the seven points and you won't. There's lots of ways to score points, tons of ways to score points in this game. Um, but they go into different categories. First of all, there's these conditions. These are the, the uh, fauna cards. And basically, if you meet the condition here, you can put your leaf out there and get that many points at the end of the game. So as an example of a condition, this says, you know, have three or more green abilities, including the one that might be on your starting volcano card. You get that? You can, at the end of your turn, achieve that by putting something right there. Okay? If you and the guy you bought in the same turn get the same card, do that, um, both of you can achieve it, but you basically, um, I think it's, it's you, uh, you both get the lower amount. I think it is. I have to look at that, but in general, what you're trying to do is score those things faster than the bot. Okay. That's one way. The other way is these three conditions, these green conditions here. So this one says I'll get three points at the end of the game per two cards. I have that have the sunshine attribute on them okay right now i have two of those so that means i'm going to get at least three points at the end of the game and this one says i get four points for every two cards with an odd number in the score value of the card so right now i have one two three four five of those and so i'm set up to get eight points minimally so far and i got some cards down here in my hand and this is an odd one as well um so that'll help and then over here i have a personal goal that says six points per row in which each of the four cards you have have a different number of cube spaces on them, zero to whatever. So here, I'm going to at least get six points. So you have to, in this game, keep those conditions in mind while you're doing everything else. Now, what is, what is it you're really doing? Well, you're basically drawing cards, putting them in your hand, Sometimes you're discarding them into, into the compost pile, which gives you one, car, one point per card in there. Sometimes you're playing them in that grid. Sometimes you are planting on them these, basically these green cubes, which are like seedlings, so to speak. All right. Sometimes you're growing things. And if you fill up the growth, you might get a bonus uh, additional point, for instance. Like this one, it only has one, but you'll get two points if you have it filled. This one has three slots you get three. This one is a two and a two. But sometimes they're different. Like this one says in my hand is a three and then a five. So if I fill three of them up, I'll get five points at the end. All right, now how do I do that? Well, I do that by taking one of these four different actions. And it is my turn right now, and I will demonstrate the actions in just a second. But this one is where you're, this green action is where you're basically playing cards out of your hand, drawing four new ones and keeping one. And then after you choose this color, you look at all of your cards and see, did any of them have a green power? And if so, you can activate the cards that are on your player board here first or after your tableau. And then you go left to right, top to bottom, activating anything in that color. The red or orange action, I should say, is you get five soil. Soil is basically the currency in this game. It is what the cards cost to play. And here you can see right here, this card would cost me three soil to play. And you can also use soil by discarding it for other things. For instance, this effect, if I activate this, which I would when I play this red one, or when I play this uh, green or yellow, <clears throat> I should say aquamarine teal or yellow, 
then I would be able to spend some of that soil and a card from my compost pile to be able to grow once and then put two seedlings out. And then this one allows me to put six seedlings out and get two soil. This one lets me take four cards into my hand and then get two growth. But after, after I take the top action, the solo bot will do the bottom action. So for instance, when I was able to draw four cards here and keep one, I take the three cards I discard and I add them to his point pile at the end. He's going to score points, whether positive or negative, he always scores positive for any value that's here. Over here, when I take this action, <clears throat> he's going to get to compost cards from the deck, two of them, plus one for each two soil that I got. Okay, here he's going to be able to get one, um, one green cube or, or sprout for every one of my blue powers. Well, that's big. That's very strong for him because I got a lot of blue powers. That would be one, two, three, four every time I take that action. And you can see he's getting some over there. And then finally here, he gets to grow once per card that I take into my hand in any of my yellow actions. So he's starting to grow there. At the end of the game, he will get points for how many cubes he has, one per cube. He'll get points for how many cards he has in his compost, one per compost card. He will get all the points over here, and he'll get his growth points, which each of these rows kind of cascades down, which will equal 25 per row, okay? And he'll get as many as he fills up. He doesn't just get that. Plus, he'll get any points that are out here. He'll score a lot of points. There's no doubt about it. So you have to score a bunch of points too. And in order to do that, you have to look at the cards you're playing, the interaction with the cards, where they're going on the tableau, a bunch of the icons that are that are present, and compare them to all the other stuff that you've got going on. So this game in and of itself is not complicated to play, but there is a ton of information and a lot of information overload that will take a few plays for you to stop forgetting about, oh shoot, I gotta be paying attention to this, and this, and this, and this. There's a lot to pay attention to, but all of it is manageable. <clears throat> the solo bot does come in four difficulty modes. In my first game, I did beat it on easy. Um, and now I'm playing on the medium mode to see how that goes in this game. And then there's also hard and expert. And if you're playing an easier medium, you use these top actions. If you're playing on hard or expert, you use these. And they basically make his actions stronger and more powerful than they were over here. All right, so it's my turn, pardon me, and I can either take the same action I just took or move this around and take whatever action I want. And I have a couple of cards that I'd like to plant, and I've been saving soil to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this green action right here so that I can plant these two cards. And I want to put this card um, basically in this spot right here because this card helps me put different cubes on it. And then I'm going to put this card right next to it because I can also put cubes on here. So this card right here is helping me, this sensitive plant is helping me plant lots of different cubes on these other cards every time I take the, the action. So that'll cost me seven. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if any time I didn't have enough, I could spend three of these cubes for two soil anytime. So I've planted those down. Those by themselves will score me five points at the end of the game, three and two. Plus, if I can grow on them, they're going to give me up to five and two more additional points. Plus, they've added to my ability engine. Plus, they have added slots for the green cubes. So there's lots of pluses. <clears throat> All right, so I put those down there, and now we're in good shape. Um, yes, now he, I have to draw four cards. So let's take four cards off the deck. <clears throat> and here's what I've got here. So I've got a terrain card, two terrain cards, and a couple of, looks like mushrooms. Well, I really want, one of my conditions here is this habitat, eight of those cards. Well, I have right now one, two, three. So I want to keep something like that. Plus, it would be also nice if I could get a sun card too, because that helps. So all those would be good, except I also need odd cards, and the odd card here is good. This one might be really helpful in helping me grow, so I'm actually probably going to ignore those other things and get this one to help me grow. Plus, this is worth zero, zero, and two, so it doesn't give him a ton of points. I'm okay with doing that. 
because one of the main things you want to do is make sure you're not giving him a bunch of points when you're drawing these cards and discarding. Now it's his turn. So he is going to draw his last card over here, and you go through the deck twice, and then you're finished. So first it says, I actually take the actions first when you do this. So it says, two growth or two cards in my hand, then activate all my yellow plus my multicolored powers. So um, I could get two more cards into my hand, but really, I think I want more growth because I'm lagging behind in the growth. So I'm going to put those two growth into this card right here so that I can complete it because one of the conditions I have here is four cards that are completely filled out in growth and in cubes, and I'm really close to that, and I'd like to claim that before he does. Okay, activate my yellow powers. Well, I can add one card to the compost from my hand, and if I do, <clears throat> um, then I would be able to draw another card. And so, let's see, do I want to do that? Do I want to discard this one? I kind of like that card, so I don't want to activate that. But before I even get to that, I could discard one soil and, well, I can't. I don't have any soil. So I really cannot do any of the extra activations there with the yellow like he's asking me to. Now, he gets plus seven growth per one growth, or additionally one growth per card I took this turn. Well, I didn't take any cards, so that means seven more growth. So I don't stack these things up to infinitum. Uh, infinitum. Um, what I do is I just... Count the growth. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it should be, yeah, basically this. All right, because I did one here, four there is five, six, seven. And this just helps me to keep from having towers that will, you know, collapse and go over. All right, so I'm literally at the halfway point of the game. I'm shuffling these back up. Now it's my turn again. <clears throat> I need some soil if I'm going to do this. If I get this, that will help me get more cards into my compost, which I kind of like because I don't have a lot, and some of my cards need those. So why don't I do this? I'm going to get five soil. One, two, three, four, five. I'll put two cards into the compost from these decks, so it just goes right in there. Then I activate all my red powers. This one I'm going to activate first. So this is one. Whoops. One here. <clears throat> then this would let me discard a compost and a leaf, which would be one of these green ones. Um, no, I'm sorry. It, it allows me to discard one soil and one compost to grow up. And I, I do want to do that. So I'm going to direct, discard the soil and I'm going to discard one card from my compost. And then I'm going to grow one of these in the effort to try to get that this card before he does, and then two more <clears throat> of these. All right, so that's that power. Then I get to put two cards from my hand into the compost if I wanted to. Well, I only have one, and I don't want to do that. Then I get to do one more growth and one more cube. Fantastic. So here's my cube, and here's my growth, which caps this one off right here. Colors don't matter, by the way. They're just for fun. Now, you're only allowed, as far as I remember, to claim one of these conditions at the end of your turn. So I made a mistake there, I think. But basically, I'll look it up real quick here. Um, <clears throat> end of turn continued. End of game, scoring points, blah, blah, blah. So if you notes, where is it? Um... Yeah, so it says two-sided cards in game, two or more, okay, yes. At the end of a turn in which a player fulfills the listed one, they may claim the highest available. They simply remove the leaf token from their spot and put it down. If two or more players, the objective, leaf tokens are placed in a clockwise turn order starting with the active player. Only players have fulfilled the objective. So um, what that is, it in, es in essence means is that um, <clears throat> we... Uh, and he is the first player, by the way, so he would get precedence. I'll just put that up there. But he would basically uh, get the first dibs, and then I would go afterwards if he placed it down on his deal. It usually doesn't happen because he's going to draw a card to do that. So actually, that doesn't happen ever, really. Um, yeah. I don't believe that's true. Yes, so... 
I believe he's the first player. Anyway, no point in wasting our time on that. Um, so I did actually fulfill this condition, which means I can take one of these leaves and I can put it there to score 15 points at the end of the game, which is really important to try to beat him. So I have completed that condition. This card does not matter to me anymore. Now I have to work on other cards. Okay? And so we activated those powers. We did everything there. <clears throat> now he is supposed to get two cards from here into the compost and one card from here for each soil that I gained. Well, per two rounded down, so he gets two more. So I didn't gain any additional soil. All right, and that's the turn. Now it goes to him. He would flip this up and, oh, look. So choose either upper objective and place leaf token. I got it just in time, thank goodness. So he's gonna choose this one and boom, get it. So that's that card, that's how it works for him. And that comes back to me and I decide what I wanna do. Um, <clears throat> I think I want more cards in my hand plus growth. So I'll go over here to this yellow power and I'm gonna get four more cards. Let's think of this deck. One, two, three, four. Lots of different choices, as you can see. Lots going on in these cards, but the, the, you get it, it becomes a little more manageable as you get used to playing the game from the information overload standpoint. Then I do two growth, and so the two growth I can do, I can do, uh, let's do this one first, because that counts for extra, and then I'll put the other one here. And then <clears throat> I will um, discard a card, or I will... Sorry, I will put one from my hand in there. Do I have an even one? This wheat one isn't bad, but it's even. These are worse. I think I'm gonna do this one because I've got enough of these already. So I'm gonna disc, I'm gonna put that in there and then I'm gonna draw another card. And now it says he's gonna grow, well, four times plus the card I drew there. So five times per um, what I did. So he's gonna get five growth. So that means one, well, one, two, three, four. So he'll complete this whole row. So I'll just put this right here. That means the whole row is completed. And then five. So he's starting, whoops, starting right there. All right. So you get the, you're get you getting the hang of what I'm doing here. Then I'm gonna draw a card back and forth, back and forth. That's the way the game goes. If at any time he gets 10 soil, he's just gonna add five more here. The game's going to end either when this deck gets exhausted or when you build out your 4x4 tableau. It is definitely a game where this is going to go by quick, so you have to be paying attention to your engine and your turn and what you're doing. You have to make sure what you're planning on is going to, going to net you a bunch of points because there's not a lot of room in this game for dilly-dallying, even though there's tons of ways you could do that and still be competitive to win. So, once the game's over, you score it all. The score, I've already told you how the scoring happens. Um, he doesn't score for any of these, but he does score for the other stuff. And then you score for everything. And then there's this achievement sheet. As you can see, I got six achievements in my first game playing it here on easy. And it just depends. There's all sorts of categories. This is something kind of fun, but it is not like a... It's not a necessity. If you want to play this game over and over and try to accomplish these goals, you know, you could try to pull some of these things off. So for instance, this one says, win with under 140 victory points or win with over 300. Win with more than 60 uh, victory points in growth pieces. Win with zero sprouts. So all these are based on winning with some kind of condition. And as far as I'm concerned, if you mu satisfy multiple conditions, well, like I said, you can get a bunch of them going. All right, let me tell you what I think about this guy. Okay, I wanna clear up something really quickly. The human player is the first and active player, so they go first. Anyway, that was a small thing, small mistake I made. So you saw the breadth of what this game has to offer. And it's definitely a game with lots of breadth, okay? There's a solid challenge here. The I, In the game that you saw me play, I was defeated by the medium bot. He had 186, I had 171. And so there's definitely some good challenge here. There's definitely a lot to consider. There's a lot of information. If you get overwhelmed by a lot of things to kind of keep track of in your head as far as where things are, this game is really not going to be for you, I don't think. And that's because there's so much information and so much stuff with regards to your engine and with, with regards to considerations of where the cards 
are located and what they're next to and how they activate in which order. I mean, this is like a supercharged, um, you know, engine builder with lots of stuff to just keep, to be aware of, to keep on the, the top of your mind. And if that overwhelms you, then you're not going to like this game. If you do like all that stuff, you like an ever-changing um, engine because you have you have hundreds of cards here. You're never going to see the same combinations again, not even close. Um, then this game has a lot to offer. The overall experience and puzzle is the same, but the different colors that you're using, as far as the, you know, the thing you're making your art with, I guess is very different. I mean, you're always going to have different sets of cards. They're always going to score different ways. There's always going to be different card interactions. They're all similar in nature, but they are very much um, varied, I guess. I'm sorry to say that again, but there's a lot of variety here, okay? It's also really easy from a solo standpoint to play a game, just discard everything, and then set up right again because there's so many cards you don't even really have to shuffle. You could just keep on going. You could probably play six or seven games without needing to shuffle. Maybe not that many, um, but definitely five, four or five games. And then just continue to use all the different island cards and fauna cards and um, everything else. And I don't have any expansions or anything like that. This is just the base game. So there's a lot to explore here. Uh, some things that I don't like, it is kind of fiddly, but I knew that going in. There's no doubt about it. You have a lot of little cubes. You're putting them out. There's a lot going on there with moving things off the board, putting them back on. So if you don't like that kind of stuff, that's going to be kind of annoying to you. Um, and so there's that. The other thing is, is that the actions themselves, by themselves, are not overly complex, maybe not even overly interesting, right? You've got a plant action, an action to get money, your soil, an action to grow stuff, and actually get more cards and then grow other stuff. So there's not a lot of complexity there. It does get more interesting as you pack on the different aspects of the engine, as you get different card combinations to make these things better actions or worse actions, and as you make the action either more powerful in one area or you flush it out so it's got more depth or breadth to it again. So I don't have to take the blue action because my orange action has enough blue action in it that it's, you know, it, it'll prevent me from having to do that. I can continue to focus on making that better. And that is interesting for sure. So the engine building side of this is, is a key part. Um, so is the tableau and the spatial side. I think that's also cool. It's fun. It's interesting. The artwork in this game is great. The theme itself, the only way the theme relates is because there is so much to encounter so many combinations that it, it definitely feels like, okay, well, that's sort of nature. Like there's just so much complexity in this world that you're going to have all these interactions with different things. And that's, you know, that's what the world's like, but this could have been anything. It's not necessarily something where it's like, wow, I really feel like I am cultivating these plants, or I really feel like I'm growing this forest. You're playing cards and making them maximize, right? And so from that standpoint, I think the reason the theme is good is because it provides a bright, colorful, nice to look at game to play. The artwork is fantastic um, and it's all natural artwork. It's all pictures. There's no, no illustrations here. So just in general, if you like a nature theme, you're going to get a lot from just the eye candy of it. And that's good. But I don't think it, it, it stands up, you know, to anything more complex than that. Um, you know, I mean... It's, it's similar with other nature games that, you know, there is, it's, it's loosely based, like Meadow, for instance, behind me, you know, yes, this eats that, that eats that, but it's still kind of still abstract. And I think this game is still fairly an abstract engine builder. Overall, I enjoy my plays of this game. Um, I think that it is a solid game with good gameplay, and it's a fun puzzle to solve. Nothing particularly about it blows me away, but it also is pretty quick to play. And because you're playing solo, you could definitely do this in under an hour. And so there's a good experience here to have to try to outsmart the bot that just keeps getting bunches and bunches and bunches of more points. But I don't feel the same excitement that I do playing other Euro games where it's like, wow, this is really, you know, novel or interesting. 
I still am going to keep my collection because I knew what I was getting into. I hesitated for a while and I made sure because I didn't want to just jump on the bandwagon of getting a game and saying, uh, but this one's going to stay with me for a while because there's a lot of content to play. There's a lot of puzzles to solve. There's a lot of interaction and a lot of things to enjoy. Um, if you like all the things I just talked to you about, but I would say that, you know, just like a game like Wingspan, which is what people continue to compare this to, um, you're when, from one game to the next of Wingspan, you don't, I don't think anyone feels like, holy cow, I just thought of a strategy that never dawned on me and now I can try this. It's, it's the same with this game is that the things you're doing are very tactical, but they fit into a bigger strategic element. It's not like you're going to have some kind of epiphany where you you all of a sudden realize, oh man, I, this game, I'm going to try the X strategy and that's going to be different than the Y strategy I tried, tried last time. I don't believe it's there. I think it's it's you're tactically crafting it as you go. And the biggest thing is you want to make sure that everything you do is maximized to the nth degree. And that's fun. I like it. But if you're looking for something brand new and novel and you have a big collection, this is probably not going to provide brand new and novel. Okay? So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate your support. And I hope that whatever you decide to play in the future, you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.